Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our Brassica production discussion. My name is Beauty Kupakwashi Magia, and I'm presenting with Francis Mapindani. Today, we are going to talk about the Brassica family. In the Brassica family, you're looking at crops such as our cabbages, broccoli, cauliflower, and rape. It means as a farmer, once you have planted your cabbage, you cannot rotate with broccoli or cauliflower because these crops will be sharing the same diseases and pests. The advantage of uh, discussing brassicas today is the general management of these crops are similar. So once you venture into your cabbage production or cauliflower or broccoli, you need to rotate with crops such as tomatoes, watermelons, or butternut. On our housekeeping issues, on our housekeeping issues, uh, this presentation will run for 45 minutes and is being recorded for internal use only. A PowerPoint presentation will be beamed on your screen during the course of the presentation and will be shared by email. Please make use of our question and answer section to type all questions and answers will be provided promptly as mics are muted. Also, the video will be shared on YouTube. On the outline, we are going to discuss why one should venture into horticulture. Also, we are looking at our gross margin, production requirements, varietal selection, sowing and planting, fertilizer and irrigation requirements, the common pests and diseases, as well as our harvesting and storage. When it comes to horticulture, ladies and gentlemen, farming is a business and there is need for you to know your return for the investments that you're going to do in your project. So with horticulture, you would find that it has got a high return as well as a quick return on every dollar invested. For example, we are seeing a farmer who is into tobacco growing. You start doing your uh, seedbed preparation in June, and you go to the auction flows in April. That means the dollar that you invest in June, you will you really get a return in April. But when it comes to horticulture, you can invest your dollar today, you plant your rape rampart, and in the first month, you've already started harvesting. When it's cabbages, you're looking at your two and a half to three months, which means for every dollar that you have invested, your return is quick and high as well. In the basket as seed core vegetables, we have crops such as our peas and fine beans, and these are suitable for your export market. And farmers, for you, you to have a stable uh, enterprise of horticulture, you really need foreign currency. And we are saying horticulture gives you that window for you to export the crops such as peas and fine beans. Also, we have got farmers who are into cattle ranching or even the tobacco that I've talked about, be it your maize or your soya beans. This could be your main activity that you are doing at your farm, but definitely you incur cost on a daily basis. For example, your transport, your fuel, your electricity, and your wages. So you can use horticulture to be a support enterprise where horticulture income would be supporting your cash flow for your daily running of your farm. On the same note, we are saying when it comes to horticulture, you can have um, a good nutrition balance on the horticulture products that you grow. On the seed core brassica basket, we have got eight fundamental aspects that every farmer looks at. And whenever you are choosing a variety, these key traits are important. And we are saying as seed core, we house these traits in the varieties that we offer you in the market. The first trait is high yields. We are saying every farmer is looking at a high return for the investments that we have done. Also, uniformity of the key traits such as your head size, your shape, your color and maturity is very important for every farmer. Also, a healthy crop with a vigorous growth crop is very important. Disease tolerance and resistance is one aspect that farmers cannot ignore because you need a clean crop at the end of the day. When it comes to our color, our flavor, nutrition, and taste, we are saying seed core vegetables gives you a high quality product in our range. 
We have got different soil types and climatic conditions, and our varieties adopt well to the different soil types and climatic conditions. Also, importantly to farmers, once your varieties have matured, there is need for you to have a high field holding capacity because before you sell your varieties, you need uh, the crops to still grow in the field without breaking. Also, the last but not least is the suitability to the different target market. We have got the wide range of varieties which suits the open market, the restaurant, supermarkets, as well as the elite fruit and vegetables. Francis, since we are in this discussion together, of the trade that I've talked about, which top two or three would you say are important to you? Hi, everyone. I, I think, think what I'm really obsessed, obsessed with is the skip maturity. maturity. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a topic which is under the uniformity of key trades. Maturity gives you your quick return on your investment, which is something that we really talked about. As a farmer, what you really want is to get your money back in a short space of time. So I'm really, really obsessed with that. Another thing that I can look at also that I really, really love is the disease tolerance and resistance. One thing that you want when you're uh, sending your crop to the market is for your crop to be um, very high quality, to be looking quite pleasing on the eye. I'm pretty sure you as a mother of beauty, you can tell me about that. Uh, you can tell me about how you really, really look at the quality at the end of the day when you're bringing something. So uh, this one also another thing that I can look at. Uh, the field loading capacity lastly. I like that because it doesn't give you pressure when it comes to you marketing your crops. You want to market your crop at a, you don't want to be rushed uh, to, to, to sell your crop. So I like the field holding capacity that the seed called brassica varieties um, uh, possess at the end of the day. I'm going to be talking on the um, uh, gross margin budget. The gross margin that I'm talking about at first is the cabbage gross margin. This gives you a clear picture of the inputs and the outputs that you incur when you are um, starting your cabbage, uh, when you're starting your cabbage crop. This is the return and also the variable cost that you get in so that you get also your profit after that. One thing that starts off is the number of plants that you can put per hectare. For cabbages, one plant gives you one head. So technically, since you're selling your heads, we're looking at a total population that can get to 33,000 uh, plants per hectare. Using an average per cut percentage of 90%, we'll get uh, the net head count of around 29,700 uh, heads that you can uh, send to the market. The variable costs can get uh, uh, close to around 3,780 to around $3,800. Therefore, per plant, the cost that you need to produce just one plant is around 13 cents. Using an average farm get price of around 40 cents, we're looking at a gross return, which can get to 11,880. This includes all the variable costs that we, the variables costs that we talked about, uh, which include the, the chemicals, which includes the fertilizers, also includes the electricity and the wages that you, in, all those uh, costs that you incur on your farm. So all after that, after your return, after calculating your gross profit, we're looking at something that can get around 8,100. I don't know about me, Beauty, but I don't know about you, but I really, really love these figures that I look at. Per, the return that you get per dollar that you invest is around $3.14 for each and every dollar that you invest. That's close to around two, 214, 214%, which is quite, quite, quite good for me. So I really love that. And uh, the ratio looks quite good as well. The next crop that I'll, talk at, uh, I'll look at is the broccoli. Broccoli um, is a bit different uh, in terms of calculating it as compared to, to, to our cabbage. For our broccoli, we're measuring it as per kg. And looking at that, it depends um, on the variety that you grow as well. If you grow a variety which gives you smaller heads, your total gross yield will be a bit lower. It all depends on your target market. If your target market requires something which has a bigger head, um, at the end of the day, you have a gross yield which is higher. But um, we are just working with the average yield that you can get. The average yield, we're looking at around um, 600 grams per, 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 per each and every head uh, of uh, broccoli. This gives us a total yield of around 24,000, basing on a party population of around 40,000 plants per hectare. The average per cut can be close to eight to five percent, and after um, after netting that, 
you can get something which is close to around 20.4 tons of yield. The variable costs are just the same as the cabbages. The chemicals that you require, the fertilizers, and also the, um, the labor, and most of those other costs, they are really, really close to each other with the, with the, with the cabbages. So all the costs, they are, since they are close to each other, we can just use the same um, variable cost range of around 3,800 to around $4,000. The variable cost of production per kg will be around 19 cents per the each and every kg of uh, broccoli that you produce. At the farm grade price of around 60 cents, you can get a gross return of around $12,240. The gross profit, therefore, will be around $8,440. Therefore, the return per dollar invested will be around $3.22 per each and every dollar that you invest in your broccoli crop. The cauliflower is just the same as the broccoli as well. We sell it based on kgs. And with an average payout of around 90%, we're looking at something, uh, a net yield that can get to around 28,800 um, um, kgs, which is around 28.8 tons. The variable cost, just like broccoli and cabbage, these range in the same, um, in the same uh, bracket because you yeah, have the pests which affect them and the everything, most of the other aspects, which you in, most of the other costs that you incur in your crop um, of either broccoli or coli. Uh, just the same as, uh, uh, as, as, as the cabbage and uh, the broccoli as well. So the variable costs um, can get to around 3,800 and the farm get price at the current prices right now, it will be around 60 cents. The gross return therefore will be around $17,280. And the gross profit after lessing with the variable costs uh, will be around $13,480. Uh, the return per dollar invested is a bit higher as compared to the broccoli and the cabbage. This one will be around $3.55 for each and every dollar that you invest in your crop. I don't know, Beauty, just uh, as I was teasing before, aren't these numbers appetizing to you? Um, thanks, Francis. I mean, I'll say uh, the numbers of the three crops that we have discussed um, are really appetizing. But I always say I wouldn't put uh, all my eggs in one basket. So definitely maybe I would go for a combination of my broccoli and cauliflowers. Um, when it comes to cabbages, what are the issues or key uh, aspects that we look at? Number one, we are saying it's about the head size. The Zimbabwean market usually, they consider the size of the head. Whenever someone walks into the supermarket or onto the open market, the first question that they pose is, oh, this is a big head. So this is exactly what they are looking at. So we are saying, ladies, once you are choosing a cabbage to grow, number one, look at the head size. And we encourage farmers to choose a head size, which is above five kg for you to meet the market of um, our country. Number two, we have to look at the disease tolerance or resistance package that our, our varieties have. And as Sidco, we are offering varieties which have got a good disease tolerance package because you all need a healthy crop, which is also disease free. So that whenever you're walking into your food, you've got a clean field. The third aspect, which is very important is your days to maturity. It's important to choose varieties which matures early. For example, we are saying Fabiola matures within six to five days, whereby Variety X matures after 100 or 110 days. It means a farmer can go with four or more cycles within a year within early varieties, whereby farmer X, which, which shows a variety which is above 100 days, would only do three cycles. As Francis said on his cabbage gross margin, you get an average of one S to three, which means a farmer who chooses an early variety will have three times four, which is $12 a return per unit area, whereby farmer X will only have $9 return per unit area. So it's important farmers to choose wisely. And as Sitco, we are saying, we are giving you the varieties which gives you a better return for every dollar that you invest. The last aspect that I value most is the shelf life. Once you have uh, grown your cabbages, you won't sell them on the same day, which means that we have, you need a period where you'll be selling your variety. And to me, usually I would put it at about two weeks and the varieties that we have, such as Fabiola, Delight and Macanta, gives you this window for you to be harvesting the cabbages and delivering, you, uh, delivering them to the market at um, a liberty. So of the three varieties that we have here, we would say 
Fabiola is the earliest. And it has proven on the market that for now on the range of cabbages, it is one of the earliest cabbages, if not none. Then our second cabbage is Delight. Delight, we are proud of Delight because of its field holding capacity as well as its resistance to black rot. So we are saying to farmers, when it comes to field holding capacity, it has got also aspect of the general uh, agronomic practices that you use um, at your farm. But most importantly, I would say number one is knowing when to withdraw the water from the field. So once your cabbage has reached its uh, physiological maturity, there is a need for the farmer to stop irrigation completely because you don't want to encourage any growth. So you just have to withdraw the water. The second aspect, which is also important when it comes to your food holding capacity is your AN or your top dressing uh, fertilizers. Make sure that as a farmer, you don't come in with your top dressing in the last fed growing phase of your cabbage. For example, your delight matures uh, within uh, 75 days, which means you can top dress up to day 40. But after day 40, you cannot top dress because you would encourage growth of inner cells whereby your cabbage have already matured. The last cabbage that we have is Macanta. Macanta is a darling of the rainy season. Once you are now growing in the rainy season, make sure you go from your Macanta because of its resistance to black rot. Of all the cabbages that I have mentioned here, the reason why we are marketing and selling these three cabbages to the farmers is, yes, it is important to stagger by uh, planting days, but it's also important to stagger by days to maturity. So we are saying you are a farmer, you want to establish a hectare of cabbages, but you wanted to do some staggering of 10,000 plants uh, at any given time. Why not do a land prep um, at the same time? You're planting on the same day, but the difference will be you have got your 10,000 cabbages of Fabiola, 10,000 cabbages of Delight, as well as 10,000 cabbages of Macanta. When it comes to spraying, you're spraying on the same day. When it comes to uh, fertilizer application, you're applying on the same day. Then by cutting the regime and the changes of uh, split days, at the end of the day, when it comes now to your harvesting, your Fabiola will come in first at day 65 then you start harvesting your Fabiola. While you are harvesting your Fabiola, your delight is also maturing. And at the end of the day, you have consistent on supplying your market. But when it came to the farm activities, you did all the activities at once. The last cabbage that we have is Dauphin. Dauphin is a silvery cabbage. And this is also suitable for the elite market. We encourage farmers who want to venture into Dauphin production to first of all, look for the market, for this is quite a niche cabbage, but also suitable for processing, especially into your dried vegetables or your mofushua. So we encourage farmers to grow daffin after they have uh, ventured into um, market research. Francis, to me, I would say with these cabbages, farmers don't need to look anywhere else for cabbage varieties, and it's only seed called vegetables. You're very right, Beauty. And yeah, talking about uh, those varieties, I've noticed a couple that I actually really love. Uh, Fabiola, in terms of the speed, we love the speed at the end of the day. I think I told you how, obsessed I'm, how I'm obsessed with the speed. And also, I love Daphne. Daphne, uh, it has one advantage that you can uh, add value to it. You can add value to it and you can increase the amount of uh, capital that you can get, the amount of profit that you can get from your crop. Um, she mentioned that you can dry it, and uh, I've seen a couple of people who actually in, uh, export this. And at the end of the day, I feel like this gives you a higher return pay on the amount of money that you invest on your crop. So I actually really love that. Talking about speed, I'll uh, get onto the broccoli as well. The first variety I'll talk about that we sell is called Sino. Uh, Sino is a very early maturing variety of broccoli, which gives you a medium to large head which ranges from around 400 to 600 grams. Maturity is in around 55 to 60 days, which is close to two months after transplanting. So this is an early, um, this is an early um, return on your investment. So this is something that I'm actually really obsessed about. So um, talking about that, it's really upright. It's an upright plant and it has very dense heads. Um, the next variety that I'll talk about is called Corato. Corato is a unique variety in, in that um, it's a variety that you can sell in summer. 
if you know more about broccolis, you know that um, broccolis, they usually perform best during the um, seasons when the temperatures are quite lower, which is the winter period that we're in now. But for some, for a summer variety, you can look at Corato. Corato is a very good variety in that it has good test tolerance. Stress in, uh, in, um, in broccoli causes a condition called prasetting. Prasetting is a condition where leaves start appearing on the head of your broccoli. This affects the quality very much. And if you send a, car, a, a, a head of uh, broccoli, like uh, which has been hit by, um, which is uh, prasetted, your crop will have uh, a lower prices compared to some other crops, which will be on the market that are much, much more perfect. So for Corato, if you're looking for something to grow in summer, we don't have any other option but to give you Corato since it is a very, very good record of performing quite good during those seasons. Um, it's an early maturing variety as well, more of uh, early to medium, since it matures in a period of around seven, 70 days. Having a lot more days, it has a larger frame and it also has a larger head as well. This variety is very good if you're looking for, if you're targeting the fresh market uh, and also the processing market as well. The processing market is the market that includes most of those companies that usually prepare those fresh veggies, which are usually frozen that we get um, as already mixed veggies in the shops. Um, so it has a good storability, which is one advantage that uh, you can get from Corato. You can touch on two industries as well. So for those who are targeting the market, the processing market, they can get Corato as well. It's a very good variety, which is good all year round. The other variety that I'll talk about is Formosa. Formosa is a, uh, is a unique variety in that it has a small frame. So being uh, having a small frame means you can fit in more plants per hectare. Fitting means more plants per hectare, which means you have more, more, more heads, but also it compromises the head sizes as well. The head size is more medium sized than the Corato and the Sino that I talked about. It ranges around 400 to 25 grams and it matures in around 60 to 65 days. This is very good uh, since you can, um, you can sell it fast and you can get a quicker return on your money. The last variety that I'll talk about is Montop. Montop is one of the oldest varieties that we have sold in Zimbabwe for, bro for, for broccoli. It's very hardy and it's a very good performer during the winter period. Matures in 60 days and it, uh, as much as it performs quite good, the head size is not quite at par as compared to uh, the Sino that I talked about. The head size will be around 400 grams and the head size is close to bluish green in color. Um, the shape is really, really good as well. And just like um, Corato, it's a variety that we can use to target both the uh, fresh market and also the processing market. So I don't really know beauty. What do you really think? Which variety would you actually prefer when it comes to your broccoli? Um, thanks, Francis. To me, I would say I would go for Corato because at the end of the day, as a farmer, I consider quality to be the best aspect that I have um, when I deliver my products to the market. Uh, going forward uh, to our cauliflower hybrids, uh, we have got three varieties, which are Nevada, Twister, and Spesta. And all these varieties have got quite a vigorous uh, growth. And when it comes to cauliflower, we are looking at the head. And when you go to the market, what the customer considers is a shiny white head. No one would want to buy a cauliflower which is creamish or which have changed its color. So we are saying to farmers, when it comes to the rainy season, which variety should you choose? You should choose Twister. And it has been named after its attributes of being able to twist and covering its leaves. Here, I've got a sample of um, a cauliflower head. This head is at day 55. But if you can see closely at this head, the leaves are really twisting and covering the head, which is inside. And once the farmer harvests this, you can take the cauliflower head to the supermarket while it's there, uh, the leaves are really covering the head. And at the end of the day, the housewife or even be it a restaurant, they would open the leaves for them to get the cauliflower. So we are saying to farmers, whenever you are buying a cauliflower uh, variety, always choose Twister during the rainy season. But off rainy season, we encourage you to go even for Nevada or Spesta. What's important about cauliflower is its disease resistance. 
because at the end of the day, when the farmer consumes or when the customer consumes the cauliflower, the head have to be clean and without any blemishes. So looking at our cauliflower, our days to maturity ranges from 72 days to 82 days. And our head sizes also ranges from 0 0.8 to uh, 1.2 kgs. As Francis said earlier on, on uh, his gross margins, you'll find that with cauliflower, you are not selling per head, you are selling per kg. So it's important to choose widely. The bigger, the better. The bigger head will definitely fetch you more money on the market. And also remember, quality is an aspect. Quality is a virtue. Let's make sure that we choose a cauliflower variety which wraps or covers its head um, completely. So to me, I would say, farmers, why should you look any further? You, all the varieties that you need, all the aspects that you consider when you're choosing a varieties, they are housed um, with seed corn. To me, talking of the rem rapid, I always tell people that this is my darling. I always say, why should we go and buy the leafy vegetables? With rape rampart, it's easy to grow. It's one uh, crop or variety that we have stretched throughout the value chain. We are saying, be it a garden at your backyard, you can have rape rampart. Be it a commercial production, you can have rape rampart. As well as our communal farmers, we are saying this is a game changer for each household. Maize is a common variety that you are growing, be it the new varieties that CITCO are introducing, the SC419, SC555, SC649, which are giving you a bumper harvest. But we are saying, yes, we have got the millimeal, but we also need the vegetable. And rep rampant is a game changer because you can use your fertilizers. At the same time, you can supplement with your manure. So we are saying this is a vigorous rep which have been improved than the normal reps that we know. And we have got um, a leafy challenge that we did whereby we are now lifting the rep rampant leaf. And sometimes it got up to about 70 uh, centimeters. So we are saying from your transplanting, you can harvest your rep rampant on day 24. And if you decide to do a direct sowing, day 30, you can start harvesting your rep rampant. Each plant can give you a kg of um, the, the leaves. And at the end of the day, we are saying you are staying on a flat. Why not turn one of your flower pots into a rape rampant flower pot? A kg is quite uh, an, a number of leaves. So it means you can go harvesting for the next three months and you don't need to buy any vegetable and you'll be having a fresh vegetable on your table. Also for commercial farmers, you're looking at your Mbari market. And usually, Embare bundle ranges from uh, six cages to about seven cages. And you can harvest about 16,000 bundles from a hectare because your number of plants will be 100,000 plants. Also, looking at the spacing of rep rampant, you're looking at your 30 by 30 centimeters. Yes, you can sell it as a fresh market. At the same time, you can also uh, process it into uh, dried vegetables. At Mbare, our minimum price that we look at is at least 50 cents per bundle. But sometimes the bundle can go up to a dollar and two dollars in the dry um, seasons. So your income will be about 8,000 years. As I said, that rep is um, an easy crop to grow. Your chemicals are usually very minimum because mainly you'll be uh, fighting with your aphids as well as you can bring in your manure. But also farmers, not this. The day you decide that you want to bring in your, your manure uh, as a supplement or as a complementary to your fertilizers, we are saying make sure that number one, your manure have uh, decomposed completely and also fumigate your manure so that you don't bring in uh, pests into the crop, such as the white grub. So to me, I always say to farmers, when it comes to rape rampant, you're looking at 400 kgs of fertilizer per hectare, uh, compound C, and also you're looking at 200 kgs of AN as a top dressing. And with those inputs, I would say for you to plant a hectare of rep rampant, you only need eight US dollars to buy your 500 gram peg. Farmers, this can be a game changer. This can be your entry point when you're starting your horticulture enterprise, as well as we have got those farmers 
we need to give relish to their farm workers. Why not have a plot of rape rampant where you will be giving your employees? Um, Francis, to me, I would say, if a house doesn't have rape rampant, you are not yet uh, serious. I think you're really right. If you can have something that can be ready to be eaten in about 24 days, I think it's a no brainer for, for anyone not to actually try something really that good and harvesting it for a long time. Um, you mentioned about three months, that's, that's a quite a long time where you can go without actually buying some of the fresh vegetables that you need at home. Um, we'll talk about, uh, next we'll talk about uh, the production requirements of some of our brassicas. This is a more of an umbrella um, section since it touches both on the, um, uh, it, it touches on the, on the broccoli, it, it touches on the cauliflower and it also touches on the cabbages and the rape as well. So the climatic requirements for most of these brassicas, this can be grown all year round. You can grow all year round. Uh, and uh, one thing that can be noted though, is that some varieties don't perform at a certain period of time. I think if you go back to where I mentioned uh, uh, Corato, Corato is more of a summer variety. And if you want something that can perform really, really good in winter, you will get Sino. If you get Sino, uh, you can do quite well during the, 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 the winter period. If you want something that performs very, very good, you have to get your, your Corato for the summer. For the cabbages as well, we can go there as well. During the winter period, during the drier periods of the year, we look at uh, the Fabiola, the Delight, but when it comes to the summer period, due to the pressure when it comes to the diseases, when it starts raining, you need something which is very, very strong. That's where Makanta comes in. Makanta is very good variety, which is very, very hearty against uh, black rot, which is your main challenge during the summer period. So you can grow all this all year round, but just variety of choice at the end of the day, it's something that you really have to inquire with your CITCO agronomist about. The optimum temperatures for most of these uh, brassicas is around 15 degrees Celsius to around 25 degrees Celsius. This can get higher and also depending on your variety, this can get, uh, during the summer, you, the temperatures can get over 30 to 35 degrees. So if you choose a variety which performs better during that time, things will be better that way. Temperatures above 20 degrees can cause growth defects in broccoli, which is uh, something which is linked to the stress that I mentioned about. The stress, um, this is something that can, um, that can make you use, uh, lose quality. It compromises the quality of your crops uh, in, your, in your broccoli. So uh, if you, it's just a variety of choice at the end of the day. If you get something which is really good, you can perform quite good above the temperatures that are mentioned, but the general temperatures, they are around 28 degrees. Cold temperatures, they slow the growth. So if this growth is slowed, uh, it delays the maturity and it delays your, the time that you get to, to, to your harvest. Um, so if you look in winter, in winter, one problem that we get is that the most of these, they perform quite slow. So it's just something that's supposed to be expected when you grow these. The soil requirements, the brassicas perform quite good in uh, medium to heavy soils. These are soils that can keep moisture for a longer time. Uh, most of the brassicas, they require more water and they are very heavy feeders. So if you have a soil which is in that, in, in that range, you'll be okay. The pH should be around 5.5 to around 6. Um, and also the soil should have good water holding capacity and adequate drainage as well. Um, the soil should be worked onto a depth of 30 to 35 centimeters as it is within the rooting depth of most of these crops. And having raised beds is very useful, especially during the summer period when we receive water and we don't want our crops to really uh, be sitting close to getting drenched in water, which is something that can give rise to most of the diseases that these crops get exposed to. Um, Beauty, you can carry on to the next uh, slot. I think to me, I think, I think to me, it's quite, quite important, important that farmers, farmers remember, remember all these varieties that you're talking about, they have got the potential and it is the farmer who unlocks that potential through good agronomic practices. And as Francis said, we have got agronomists throughout the country who can help you in managing your crop so that you maximize on the output because at the end of the day is the dollar that you get that counts. When it comes to the spacing and plant population, we are saying when it comes to cabbages, 
you need to have a minimum spacing of 50 by 60 centimeters. Remember, your head size is determined by the spacing. If you put a lower spacing, for example, maybe you're 40 by 50 or you're 40 by 40, it means you're going to have a small cabbage at the end of the day. So we encourage farmers to make sure that when it comes to the cabbages, you give it more spacing so that you can unlock the potential of the head size. When it comes to broccoli and cauliflower, we encourage a plant population of at least 40,000 plants uh, because you are looking at your 40 by 60 centimeters. It is also important farmers to note that cabbages, broccolis or cauliflowers are heavy feeders. Therefore, you need really to make sure that you have got the correct fertilizers and also correct fertilizer placement at the right time. To me, I would always say, it's important for you to do a soil analysis and you get the recommendation from uh, the results of your soil. But in the case that you are not able to do a soil analysis and not a serious farmer should be able to do soil analysis. Yes, we recommend that you use your cup number 30 when you're planting your cabbages of compound C and for your broccoli and cauliflower, we encourage cup number 32, which is just a broad spectrum is not meant for your particular farm. Looking at the top dressing, I would say you need to split your fertilizer application into at least three application, and sometimes at most four, depending on your target market. As I say that, for you to get a bigger head, you need to put uh, more fertilizers. And also not farmers, your fertilizer will decide on the head size in the first 32 days of its growth. So it's important that you should make sure that your AN or your top dressing fertilizer is applied within the first 32 days. So as CITCO, we are proud to announce that of all our varieties, you are applying your fertilizer within the first 32 days as our maturity range are within um, a desirable and accepted, uh, acceptable limit. And also your fertilizer intervals should be one week. We discourage farmers to come in with fertilizers on one day. So we encourage you to make sure that your fertilizer application is done um, using some splits. Okay. Talking about the irrigation, drip irrigation or overhead irrigation are usually preferred, but the most preferred is something that usually doesn't trace the leaves, something that creates uh, a condition which is much more favorable for buildup of fungal infections. So. Drip is usually the most preferred since it doesn't uh, induce any um, any any watering of the foliage of your plant, as this can give rise to most of the diseases that we talked about that can affect your plants. One thing that we usually really really want is for the soil surface to be kept moist soon after transplanting. Just this is to make the water available to your plant each and every time. Uh, this can differ depending on your soil um, type. Some soils, they lose water fast, some they keep water fast. So at the end of the day, what you really want is something that you can analyze when it comes to your own waterings. Your own waterings, this can be analyzed by your guys at the farm who can, uh, or you can do that personally. Looking at uh, the interval that you require uh, between your, 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 your two irrigation cycles. But in short, uh, in the soils that we talked about, which is the, usually the heavy to medium, We'll be looking at irrigation cycles, which are around two to three times a day. Water, uh, the, the plant transplants should be watered daily until the plant establishes. And this is usually not a problem in most of the uh, seedlings that are gotten from nurseries, which are planted in trays. But for the ones which are planted directly into the soil, those ones uh, directly planted into the soil and transplanted, those ones usually uh, require that the, transplant, the, the, the watering to be done daily until the plant establishes. Excessive irrigation after maturity can cause splitting in cabbage. Once the cabbage is uh, set a size that it really, really wants and you keep on watering, this is usually a problem. So therefore, it is uh, very, very uh, important for you to notice the different uh, to to notice that you or you can't uh, uh, water your plants excessively. The common diseases for the most of these brassicas, we're looking at black rot. This is the major problem usually during the water periods 
and also in uh, very humid conditions as well. Humid conditions, just as I mentioned, they create a buildup of most of these diseases. So it's very important for you to be wary of these diseases like the back rot, but also uh, we have the advantage as CITCO that we have varieties that have tolerances to these diseases. So it's much, much more better. Uh, the alternaria is another condition as well that's usually a problem. Common pests are aphids, diamond back moth and the thrips. Diamond back moth is the major problem and there are a lot of crop uh, chemical solutions that can be offered by most of the uh, chemical suppliers in Zimbabwe. Thank you, Francis. Um, because of the disease peg that you talked about our varieties, it is important to note that of the diseases that you talked about, we said our Makanta is very resistant to a blood rot and uh, alternaria. Also, note, looking at uh, the last tips that I would say you choose when you are uh, doing your, your black rot, you have to note this. Number one, once you decide to do your broccoli, you can't do broccoli alone. You need to do broccoli and cauliflower. And with most farmers, you plant your broccoli and cauliflower at the same day. But it's important for you to note that your broccoli matures earlier than cauliflower. So you need to come in with your cauliflower earlier than broccoli. Number two, I would say to me, with cabbage production, there is need of consistency. So what happens is as farmers, while well, at least we have planted our cabbages, there are peak periods where the cabbages fetch high values and some off peak periods when they fetch about 30 cents. But for a farmer who is always in the game throughout the year, definitely when you do your budgets or when you're now looking at your cash flows at the end of the year, you will have raised so much money. Farmers, to me, brassica is one crop that everyone should do. When you're looking at our crops, giving them their ranges, you would find brassica can be an entry point into horticulture. On the screen right now are the contact details for the agronomist throughout the country. We have heard a question on our question and answer segment, which is saying, do the agronomists come to us for free or we pay? We are saying as CITCO, we give you these agronomists for free for them to help you unlock the genetic potential and also make money. The other question that we have is, where can we get these varieties? You can get the varieties from shops like our farming city, Farm Biz, Blawayo Seed Center, uh, Mutare farm supplies, profits, and also supermarkets throughout the country. And guess what? There is this question which is saying, do you encourage us to still grow drum yet? Farmers, now we are looking at hybrids. You can't make money from OPVs. Whenever you decide to do horticulture, make sure you are looking at hybrids because the value of the seed might look pricey today, but the return or the harvest that you get will be worth it. So I would say, with this presentation, we will share it by email to all the viewers and also it will be on YouTube. Thank you for listening. Francis, what will be your closing remarks? As I always say, it's important for you to do brassicas. One thing that I can really say is that if everything starts with the right seed, if you start with seed cooperatives, you can never go wrong. I think that uh, sums up most of uh, most of the things I, I wanted to say. And also, I think you've already mentioned if the agronomists come for free or we pay for those. All agronomists, if you have our products on ground, all of those, uh, they are, uh, all the services, they are, uh, they are for free. So it starts with the right seed. Thank you for watching. We can live.